I've been coming to Heroes Camp since I was four. It's, it's uh, like, it's a good place. Heroes Camp to me is like a home. It's, it's like family here. When yeah. we come, when we enter the door, you just feel a relief when you walk in. This is God's ministry done God's way. Girls Camp has been pretty much everything for me is in my life. And I think that's the biggest thing about Heroes Camp. We really make kids feel like they belong in this place. They just belong in this community and in this world. You got love in the atmosphere, man. We have fun. You're having fun and you're learning about the word. It's going to impact you and it's going to change you for the better. It's hard to stop coming if you really love the place. They show you so much love, it's just a new family. A lot of drama in their life, a lot of trauma, especially when these kids who come from um, what seems to be a dead-end situation or a story. And they need to be refilled, or maybe some of them feel for the first time with love, with hope, with understanding of their value. And so this, this team, amen. This team, not, not just this team, but that team back there, oh, the Perry, amen. And the Magnus, they've been doing a wonderful job uh, fulfilling the need that uh, very few are willing to, to take on. I was thinking, praise God, they would take the time out to come worship with us this morning. This brother bring a word from the Lord. So after the choir was sang, then the next preaching voice you will hear do that from the Reverend Dr. Pat Magnet. back there, I have one daughter, about 100,000 sons, and that's her pregnant husband. His name is PJ, and I prayed for her to get married from inside the womb. Because when I found out it was a, a female, I know how this world works, and I wasn't gonna have a prison ministry. You know, I'm gonna have nobody but my daughter. Amen. So his name is Pat, my name is Pat, his dad's name is Pat. I'm born June 9th, his dad's born June 9th. His grandma's name is Rose. My grandma's name is Rose. His dad's left hand and I'm left hand. I'm 10% of the people in the world of left hand. I'm saying prayer works. Yeah. Prayer works. And that's what I want to talk about today. You got anything to say about it? All right. Now that's, I didn't say that's the first, but that's <laughs> I would like to acknowledge uh, Jeff Thomas for Put me on to your Pastor Rick, and thank you. The Lord bless you, Darren. I love you. Um, Pastor, I love you. Saints, I love you. You all have a great man of God. 
一首《澳门》啊，比较和谐的歌曲。Get into the refreshing of a foot washing and have my anointing added on to by your pastor. Let me encourage you. I'm gonna go a lot of places. I'm like a um, like a railroad station in Chicago. Got a lot of streams going at one time, all the time. That's just the way that、uh, God has blessed me to think and to behold His revelation about what I'm supposed to do with my life, Mrs. Powell. That's right. Okay. But you impacted my brother, and he served the Lord. And Mr. Hughes, raise your hand, please. Kelly, right there. That man right there. You were a rock. Without me ever knowing that what that was. When I was 14, 15, 16, and 17, but now that I know what that means, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you, sir. Thank you for being a stalwart. Thank you for all that you went through in a time of racial upheaval, and we came from an era today is a non-era. But everybody gets together about something about race, but they really don't get together to repent. They really don't get together to, you know, confer about what it is that we as white people have done. You know, I don't know why this conversation that I'm having with you isn't being said all over the land, so we can put some things to rest、Amen. in repentance and fasting and contrition and brokenness. But you are one of my heroes, and thank you. I thank the Lord that I have an opportunity today to express that to you. Uh, thank you so very much, and your father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.、Um, <clears throat> I grew up playing basketball and playing baseball. My father was an orphan. Talking about your mother's camp, and、uh, um, my mother came from a large family, a Hungarian. They moved over here, and they lost two children right after they got here. They had thirteen all together. So I grew up in. Cooperative clothing, cooperative economics, cooperative everything. I didn't have a choice. I didn't wear any of my own clothes until I outgrew all my family members. And so I know the you know the thing that y'all young people don't know nothing about called a hand me down, you know. And so you know, I, and then my father uh, uh, graduated from the third grade, and he quit school, went to work, which wasn't unusual in that time. See, I was saying to our kids yesterday at Heroes Camp in the prayer school is that、uh, Noah, in their day, they missed all the signs that the flood was coming, because something was coming that never had happened before. It never rained before the flood. The Bible said that the earth was watered from the ground up,、mm -hmm. and so. And it took a long time because there wasn't any loaves, there wasn't any menards, there wasn't anywhere you you could go to the lumber yard. They had to take an elephant and cut that wood down and put it on there, and it was as large as Notre Dame football field. And for 125 years, everybody mocked him. But one day, the flood came. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the second coming of man. And I think we're missing the signs. I think we know something is wrong, but proof that we can do something about something that's wrong is that we'll be in a place of prayer to sustain. And I, I was reading Ian Bounds on prayer, and what he said is that your prayers, even after you go be with the Lord, are still working until they find fulfillment. Amen. That's the old blood right there to me. You know what I mean? I just think that's all. I think that's off the chain. That my prayer, I'm still working through prayer, and when I'm in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth. I don't want to populate heaven as much as I'm willing to take the responsibility to have dominion in the earth. Now, I'm talking about heroes, guys. I'm giving you a little bit of a, a format, you know, about how this is、uh, what I'm supposed to say. And so, my father started in little league, and he cared for people. And when I was eight, I was in the majors. And we went to my first field trip to see the White Sox play. Six buses of kids, of fathers and sons. If I took six buses of kids today, there would be six buses of kids. Yeah. All I 
do is cry. Because I came from an era into a non-era. I came to, we have more sex than we have parents. We have more fun and pleasure than we have stamina to develop something that's born in the need of development. And when we didn't pay attention to abortion and the silent scream, now we have school shootings and nobody in the prayer closet. So it's still a silent scream. We must come to prayer. Daily. Work out our soul salvation and fear and trembling before the Lord. So we develop a prayer culture at Girls Camp. And I heard someone say that if, and they over 6,000 churches in Africa. I've been exposed to extreme thinking, extreme being my whole life. I thank God for all the drug days I had and selling dope and playing sports and being out there around the way looking to see what I could see. And I didn't see some things wrong, but I just didn't see Christ. And I had an encounter with Christ October the 17th, 1981 at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm very much like Mary. I'm very much like Paul. Mary had an encounter. She went to bed a virgin. Woke up a virgin, but she was pregnant. That's yeah. not man. I think that's cold blood. I just like, man, I'm impressed by that. I'm not impressed by much. But one thing I'm impressed when I go to prayer at 3 o'clock in the morning by myself and the Holy Ghost is there. Leading me and guiding me into all truth. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are, not, are not our young people worth our time? Because all Change takes time. And the more you do things over time, then one day overnight it's going to change. Over time. Over time. Over time. Over time. The secret of the secret place, the secret of the secret life, is that there's a secret place. And the secret of the secret place is to go in and close the door. We bring too many things into prayer that we weren't supposed to be involved with to start with. Yeah, yeah. If it would be about our father's business, I think we're coming to a time of change that's unprecedented. I think right now we are in a place where we could, it's, it's right on the tip of our tongue. I'm teaching the children that my life and death are in the power of my tongue, so my checkbooks in my mouth. My AK-47 is in my mouth. I can protect myself with my speech. No, it's just the truth. That's just what I believe, and I've seen it work. And I'm not going to give nothing to nobody that doesn't work. I'm not, if it doesn't work for me, I'm not saying it. But I'm taking the whole counsel of God, and I've seen that this stuff really, really works. But application is the horsepower of revelation. If you don't apply this, it will not work. Truth has fallen dead in the street, equity can't enter, so justice stands in far off. So this is what we do. In Madison Avenue, it sets the culture of how people dress. How are you going to dress a young lady today from Madison Avenue? And then what we think is influenced by the culture, what Gil Scott here called Hollywood. Hollywood. So we see all this stuff and we put it out there like that for children in that who don't have a mother because she's on the ground because the father's not there. And when they act out what they see in the culture and they see their heroes on TV that are zeros, then when they go to court, oh, everybody they got a paid lawyer, they get a public defender whose dockets are like this when they walk in there. So I'm talking about when I get ready to show up, I'm bringing the force of my faith, the force of my energy, the force of my life, the force of my energy, all the force of mustard that I could muster. David mustered his mighty men. And there's something in obedience. Let's, let's turn, you, turn to your Bible if you got one. And then we need a, a harmony in difference. A harmony in difference. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can be young and be black, and I can be 
uh, white and then uh, older. But then when we go higher, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, so now we got harmony and difference. One day I was watching a, a video and Malcolm X's daughter was on there with Dr. King's daughter and they wanted the same thing, they want peace. We got to have love in our hearts so we can go deeper. We got to have wisdom in our minds because the things that we're dealing with have been left undealt with so long that now they become complex. We don't need a PhD. We don't need that. That is not the, the, the things that we have to deal with. It's called sin. And why can't the church want to call it what it is? We call, we call who's the best basketball player. Everybody know who that is. And we know who the best football player is. But when it comes down to this salvation, we're scared to say Jesus in school. Yeah. You can't take prayer out of nowhere if you want to pray. Prayer's on the inside. Prayer's on the inside. Pray on the outside. You can't stop from anybody from doing anything that's spiritual if you want to do it. If you want to do it. I'm not going to be lazy about doing it. I'm going to save my best energies of my day to do it. And I'm going to do it until I'm satisfied. And I'm not, and because i got a witness from the Holy One on the inside, I'm not going to be satisfied for the inside of me is satisfied. We need just a, a whole different approach to winning souls, a whole different approach to, and I speak five different languages. All of them are English. I know how to speak to the judge. I know how to speak to the popo. I don't know how to speak to the homie, to the lonely, the little shaver, the single mom. We gotta get out there and get busy. I've been exposed to a lot of things. Gil Scott Heron said the revolution wouldn't be on TV. It wouldn't be televised. If it's on TV, it probably ain't about much. I don't want to Facebook my salvation away. I don't want to smell you. If I got bad breath, I want you to smell it. I want to be real because the more real you are, the closer you are to God because God is real. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, okay. Let's turn over to uh, 1 Kings. Show you a few scriptures. My wife and I, I stepped, I stepped off my job into nothing. And I teach the kids about faith all the time. If you're in the tree of life and the branch sound like you're breaking, don't reach back in the trunk of the tree. Reach out into nothing. Let God catch you. Let God catch you. That's how you learn about what God got for you. Everybody hedging their bet. They finna do this and that work. Hey, man, listen to me. You ain't ready for faith. You're not ready for faith. If you hedge in your bet, man, faith will work. Faith works. Without it, the Bible is so, listen, listen. You want to find the grace of God? Read the word. If he said without faith it's impossible to believe him, there's grace for faith. There's grace for obedience. There's grace for fasting. When you fast, when you pray, and when you give alms to the poor, and when we don't, we're in open defiance. As, and I'm not talking about you in this house. When I, this is a conversation that I'm having with myself. I'm just permitting you to hear that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We must, I must, I must, the energy, the years I got left with my life, another 40 or 50 or 60 years. A, year, a day is a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is a day. No man has ever lived one day in the Lord. 965 years, 969 years of Methuselah was. And they're extending our life. But I like this wellness idea. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. The less you eat, the more you know. Because you come alive, you know. And it's in our knowing, Adam, new Eve, you know. Those that know their God will do mighty exploits. We can, and the greatest prophetic minds the world has ever seen are out there selling dope and gangbanging right now. They know how they know the schematic how to rotate and do things. But because I this is where I'm sitting, right? My best friends are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 26. I know the way that they're looking at things. They're my value system. That's why we don't charge anybody in Euro Scan. We have two cats come from Buffalo, New York. And they're like, man, this for free? You cut the hair, give sneakers, and feed, and remove from and minister to us? They cost me $15 every day I go to the Y. Why do you do that? Because you're part of my value system because he died for me. When I was dead and sin and trespassed, he came and got my behind. He did. I mean, he did it for all of us. And in the deeper that you were in darkness, yeah. huh? You got to go to a higher height. Yeah. You got to go to a higher height. When you come out, there's some things I just don't fool with. 
This is some places I don't go. This, a matter of fact, I don't hardly go nowhere anymore. I go to prayer, come back home, take a nap, work out, talk to my wife, go back to prayer, wait for the kids to come, pray with them, mess with them. I mess with people. I mess with people. That's how you get to know where you find out where they at. Huh? Yeah, no. Huh? Man, I like that farm, man. What's up? You know? Because see, I'm making cake of you. I'm showing you that I see you. I don't need you to make a whole lot of wild statements with your life. I'm looking at you. You know I see you. Every time I'm sitting over there in my chair, Mr. Hughes, and they're hooping, every time they cross somebody over, every time they shoot, every time they, and they do something good, they're looking to see if I'm looking. Why? Ain't nobody else looking. Is it that easy? Well, I mean, I think so. I think, I think you were looking at me. Huh? You were judging me. You spoke to me every day. I sure, I sure, I know. And I got a knucklehead anointing because I was a knucklehead. You know? I'm just talking like real talk. I don't know how to talk. Church talk. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you need to hear that. I'm saying this is what goes on at the camp. Um, what I said, First Kings 17. Let's look at verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here. That's instruction. Turn eastward, some more instruction. Hide from the brook chair, more instruction, which flows into the Jordan, which is an observation or revelation. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook chair, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread, meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Why did that happen? Because he obeyed. That's right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than going to church. Applaud your pastor. Obey the word he preached to Man, Pastor Tune today, boy. I mean, across America, maybe across the world. Church in Africa, a mile wide and an inch deep. Churches are growing all over the place, but there's no lamentation. There's no ache on the inside. I wonder if they've ever seen the Lord the High and lifted up for the first time. His train fills the temple. My mother's there. Some of y'all mothers and fathers are there. They are on the other side. There's witnesses. They're championing us. They're calling for us to come on with this thing. Let's wrap this thing up. Let not not bring the end. Let's bring a new beginning. Huh? And let's have a beginning of subduing the earth. Having dominion. Huh? We multiply. We got that part down real good. We got one in the oven with nothing in the pantry. So we got some stuff, we got a tidal wave of infants that are coming our way. And I'm trying to get you ready for it because it's your responsibility along with your call of evangelism. And we need the gifts of the, of the Lord to work in the, especially prophetic evangelism. So be able to have a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom for somebody. Now, nah, I don't know what to do, you know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, you know, this stuff, is, and, and I'm telling you, I've been around hair and crap almost my whole life, but I ain't seen nothing like that. This thing is so demonic and it's so aggressive. Kids came to the camp the other day. Father, and on the other side of Hebrew Village, there's a, uh, 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 thank you, a trailer park. And the father is on meth, but he's sleeping in the shed in the middle of winter. I think his deliverance is going to need a little bit more than church. The point I'm trying to get across is where you don't want to play is where they get disqualified. The level you don't want to play at is the place where we lose them. And we're here. Someone paid some dues for me. Somebody paid some dues for me. At my mother's funeral, I did two grams of cocaine, drank a brick of rose, smoked a tie stick, did some speeders, my mother told my wife, he gonna be okay. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's their faith job. Huh? She died when I was 23. I had my encounter when I was 28. Drug over those two or three times in between time. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here, and I'm not glorified now. I'm talking about where this verb is coming from, man. I almost didn't make it. I almost, but somebody's prayers, somebody's standing in the gap. Some, you weren't standing in the gap intentionally for me. You were just standing up, and that was the gap. You stood up when riots broke out of the South High School. Nobody was a hunky or a nigger or the rest of that stuff. You were trying to get that squash. I watched.
watched what other teachers did. I watched what, uh, what, the, what, what, what the security guards did. I watched that stuff. I was 14 years old when Dr. King died. That marked my life. Mm. This thing because they need what you got. Oh, at first they're going to overlook you because you look old. Let me tell you something. When you look old, you also look wise to me. Yeah. Uh, I told all our kids, this is unfortunate you thought I was born 64. You thought, I, you thought I ever get mad? You think I ever get kicked out of school? You think I ain't never stole nothing? You didn't think I told a lie? You didn't think I did nothing stupid? That a PhD is stupid. <laughs> That's what gives me the right now that I was blind, but now I see. Yeah, yeah. I was dumb, but now I know. Yeah. And it was somebody's intercession that brought me through. It wasn't because all of a sudden I decided, no, I was in too deep. Well, something I lost, I seen the Lord, uh, the little man was sitting over here, a little bit more now. Pray for him. If, if you're going to serve the Lord and you young, they're going to hate on you on Facebook. There's kids that would rather get shot with a bullet than get hit with a text on Facebook. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to tell you about this culture. It is vile. And you know why it's like that? Because we didn't monitor. We was busy doing our thing, getting paid this American dream. Mm. Turn over to, if you will, please, Second Chronicles chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29. My wife and my daughter have permitted me to run my heart out for the Lord. Amen. Chapter 29. Give it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. You can pull God calls them and give you bosom. We have not charged a child anything in Hero's camp. In 29 years, God gave me a gift of faith. They come in, and you know what? Entitlement in this generation is not illegitimate. Because when you're born, you think about charging your, taking your baby to school or buying his school clothes or, or paying for their breakfast. That just was in you. But when that ain't done at home, and our kids, and our kids, and it was in St. Joe County, 44% of the people live beneath the poverty line. That means a family of three is growing up on 19,000. So when they come to the camp, they're looking for provision. And if I'm a provider, then the provision is there. Now, I don't need them to, you know, I, I, after four, five, six, seven years, you know, I think that you ought to, like, release the spirit of entitlement. Little dude, Destin, never met his dad, in prison, mom goes to church in Southgate. We're having prayer school. Justin, you a liar? He said, yep. I said, you lie all the time? He said, yep. I said, uh, you lie to me? He said, no. I said, is that a lie? He said, yep. I said, you see, I can work with that. I can work with that. He only lied to get his needs met. I had to interpret that, not that I had to interpret that in the spirit. That's how we need to learn. I, wanna, I don't want to put my fingerprints on someone's life. But I want God to reach through my life and put his fingers through my hand. I don't want, I, I, I can look and see what I think it is, or I can wait until I know what it is. Amen? It says in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1, Hezekiah became king when he was 29 years old, but looking for young leadership now. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And look what it said in this key, give your prayer answer. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father David had done. Let's turn over to John chapter 8. Thank you for permitting me to come. Thank you for hearing my heart. Amen. Thank you for hearing what I don't know how to say. Amen. Thank you for reading between the lines. Thank you for not judging me. Amen. Thank you for utilizing me. So many people want to use somebody, but they don't want to utilize somebody. Uh, no, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm watching you do that over here, you know, and if I wanted to come, you know what I mean, and, and have you play for me or something, you know what I mean, then I would economically remunerate you because it took you time to learn how to do what you do. It does. So I would utilize you. Mm. But if I didn't appreciate you, I'd just use you. And then I wouldn't get the real thing that you got in you. I know how to get out of people what I need to get out of people because I know that, you know, 
uh, that the gift comes from the Lord. The Bible said, and, and you can read it for yourself in Job 31, and this is what I tell all the guys that come and volunteer in my, in my uh, payroll staff, that Job made a covenant with his eyes not to look on a woman wrong. And if a woman, he looked on a woman wrong, was someone crying on his wife. Huh? See, if you don't work with these young people, their mothers are desperate. Their mothers are desperate for their son to get some testosterone in them in the spirit. And it's dangerous when a guy is a sexually whole to have him be around the kid and be real efficient with him. Then the kid singing the praise to the mother. The next thing you know, the mother looking at it with admiration because she ain't been following the mother neither. This stuff goes in. We're in about two, three generations of complexities right now. Then later on in Job 31, Job said, and if my fleece doesn't warm the orphan, that made my arm be ripped from his side. So in other words, he made a vow. My whole life is a vow. My marriage is a vow. Mm. Huh? Me and my wife, I said, you know, we're consistent, we're accountable, we're responsible, but one thing we are, we're gladiators. We're gladiators. I, I, me and my wife, I'm a different kind of a cat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all, you already discovered that. But we had grown up in racist America. Uh, everybody talking about Ferguson. Missouri, I grew up in a country called Ferguson, you know, and I'm not letting it off the hook, and I'm running around with my axe, but I keep it in my, yeah, I keep it in my holster, you know why? Because I'm going to find a root. <coughs> Lay the axe to the root. I might want to cut some stuff out of the tree. Yeah, maybe so. But the Bible says, Lay the axe to the root. And I believe America is supposed to be an experiment in heaven by God, what the new heaven and the new earth is supposed to look like, where there's everybody can get along, that there's no greed, you know? Look at who is, let me tell you who come to Heroes Gap, from the Honduras, from South Africa, from, from Nigeria, from Senegal, from Mexico, from Harlem. How do you find your way to, from Compton, from Houston, from Pittsburgh? How do y'all find your way? We was in the park and they said it was free. In my father's house. Uh, there's many mansions, there's many dimensions, there's many realms of thought and perspectives that we've not tapped into because we're not hungry for the ages that are to come. They'll only come by our hunger. We can pull it out of the spirit world and wrap this thing up and begin a new time with the lion and the lamb that lay down together. That man will be, you talk about wellness, that man will be died, died a hundred years old, will be known as an infant. That's what the Bible says. Put your hand in a coldness hole and you come out and you'll be okay. Stop all this killing. Yeah. I'm just saying what I see. Yeah. I'm just reporting the news. I'm wrapping this thing up. Yeah. Mm. Amen, brother. Um, mm. In the start of verse 28 of John chapter 8. Yeah, verse 28 John chapter 8. Nope, John. John 8, 28. My wife, better known as Mama BJ, in Heroes Camp, the unsung mother for unseen people. The only time you see him is on the news where they did some stuff. And sometimes they did some stuff because they couldn't handle it no more. Mm -hmm. And they were seized by frustration. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the lack of education. It was the lack of learning on our part what it is to overlook somebody by our progress. And it puts a built-in spiritual slant on our nose to look down at them rather than lift them up after we didn't lift him up. He said, if you lift me up, I draw all men. He's so indiscriminate. And the greater their need they are when you go out of evangelism. It's always the fish that got the gold in their mouth. It's been so many times that my money wasn't right. And somebody come and wrote me a check. I just been living that way. My wife broke her ankle. No insurance. Pinning the plate put on both sides of her foot. Up to here for eight months, straight out like that. No insurance. But the orthopedic.
hear you say, I see what you're doing. If you just pray for my grandchildren, I'll do it for free. The hospital said, I see all the t-shirts and all the kids that come to me, I'll do it for free. The anesthesiologist said, I'm a Christian star, I'll do it for free. Then the orthopedic kept following us and fell in love with my baby. His wife was in assisted living. He was in his 80s. Over the next 13 years, probably gave me an announcement just to make sure it wasn't going for it. I don't compromise, I pray. I don't give myself a day off, yeah. you know? And then I heard the Lord say, somebody's gonna leave you and write you into their will. Yes, sir. He came over to take my baby out to eat that night to the more silly. I just want you to know I wrote your kids into my will. I don't want to give them money to the